Have you ever wanted to wow your report viewers with your report? Of course you did. And have you ever thought that the default slicers just didn't quite wow? Have no fear because the chiclet slicer is here. Uh, but before we jump into this exploration of this very cool little, little visual, please consider subscribing and hitting that like button if you think this video was useful. So am I the only person thinking about a little baby chickens when I read the name out loud? Chiclet Slicer? Anyway, this is a custom visual and it is produced by Microsoft and it's currently in its 1.6.3 version. And it's basically a slicer on steroids. There's a lot of additional features and options that you can do and include in this slicer, ranging from the way it looks to even including images in your data. So I'm going to use this report and change a bit based on what I see with the chiclet slicer. So let's uh, get those visuals over to the chiclet slicer section. Because we don't want to have the same data. Just nicely visualized. I'm going to move this a bit to the side and you'll see in a moment why I'm doing that. So the chiclet slicer is a certified slicer. So if we're going to look for it, uh, there's obviously multiple options. You can just click it on, uh, find it on the search or you can find it on the Power BI certified section. And it's down below. And here you go, the chiclet slicer displays images and or text buttons to act as a filter. So once that visual is added, it will show up in your custom visuals uh, section, the chiclet slicer 1.6.3. So let's see it in action with a date range. There's basically two things that I always like to do with this visual, and that's date dimensions, and for instance, types of projects or, or single value slicer options. So let's start off with the date dimension. I open up the chiclet slicer, I set it here, just around the corner. And right from the start, you see that it has more options than the normal slicer, which has only a single value. We have a category, we have values, and we have image. Right from the start, there's only one required value, and that is the category. And we can open up the time phase data set. And we can open up the task time phase data set. And let's move time by day here. This doesn't look very cool, right? This doesn't look very useful. But what we do have is we have the option to not look at the date dimension itself, but the date hierarchy. And we can set the year, for instance, here. So with those year values, you see all the years that you have in your data set. And you can easily mix and match and see how that, responds, uh, how that data responds to the chiclet slicer. So because there's only two years, you might want to also include an additional chiclet slicer here. Uh, and let's have that one being the months. And we can have that changed to not show in, in a bunch like this, but going into general, we can select one column and obviously 12 rows. And because it's a date dimension, it, al it already knows the order of appearance of the months in our year. Now, if we have tasks in, for instance, January, what we do is we see that we don't have any work in January, not in any of the years, maybe in July. Yeah, in July, there's a lot of work to be done. And with the chiclet slicer, you have the uh, default option of multi-select. There's an easy option to turn that off and it is located under the format section. In general, you'll find a multi-select value here. Now, if you turn that off, it will default to only one selection, 
but you can still use the control key and for instance do a multi-select if that would be appropriate so right from the start this is a very useful way to look at the chiclet slicer where you have the months you have the years oh there you go it has the years it has the months and you can even add an additional chiclet slicer and have that for instance being the quarters and quarters would be nice to visualize that with again one column you don't need to have four rows it will automatically know that it's four values here uh, but you might want to add that yourself if you think that would be um, a requirement so this is one of the things that I love to use the chiclet slicer for but this is not the only thing that you can do with the chiclet slicer as I mentioned before we have multiple values that we can add here we can add a category a values and an image for the image it's very interesting to see how that will interact with your data um, and what is actually visualized so here I get to hand it to a trick that I learned from Jesse from Jesse's power channel and I'll put a link in the show notes how to extract the data that I want to have in a in an image visual straight from out um, straight from Power BI so what I'm going to do is I'm going to look into the enterprise project type and these are all the enterprise project types that I have now I'm going to extract that data and I'm going to put that data here and I'm going to open up Excel and opening up Excel and inserting and grabbing that data from the CSV and I'm going to change the first line here and set that as the first row being the header because that's actually going to be the enterprise project type name and it has five values because there's five different types of projects that I have here so now I'm going to click close and load and I have the start of a little table that I'm going to use in my Power BI but this table is going to add more data so I've extracted the type of values that I want now I'm going to add a new column and I'm going to name that uh, report name and that report name is actually going to be a simplification of this it's going to be construction other IT R&D or maybe fancy R&D and again because I want to have four different kinds of values in my slicer so as a third thing I need to have as a third thing I'm going to look up the um, images now I've already grabbed mine from the icons 8 website which is a very nice website we have a, a license for that and you can grab files from there and also grab the base 64 code there are websites out there that can help you grab the base 64 code um, that is what you require to have and I have my notes down here so we have the R&D and that is going to be this massive number and I'm going to change the column name and this is going to be image and then we have the construction and the construction and we have the IT and then we have other twice now there's two things that you can do now you can store this file somewhere on a SharePoint driver for the situation that more data is coming in more enterprise project types so more report names so no uh, so more images as well I'm not going to do that now because I'm just going to copy and paste this but that is a way that you can ensure that more data is actually going to be utilized or refreshed once you add that to that Excel file so what I'm going to do now is I'm going to grab the data 
I copy it, head on over to my report again, and I'm going to remove this, and I'm going to enter data, paste all that values that I've had previously, and I'm going to call this table image, images, and I'm going to load that. And we need to make sure that the actual images correspond with the actual enterprise project type name. So going into the model, I can see that the intelligence already found that there is a link between these two, basically because I have the same name and the values are correct. So this is, this is going well. Heading over to the report, I now need to make sure that Power BI knows that those images actually are images. They're currently configured as text, not summarized and un uncategorized, but I'm going to categorize it as an image URL. And now with all that preparation done, what I can do is I can, I can open up another chiclet slicer, make that a little wider and set that aside here. And I'm going to add the project type name as being the category. Nope. I'm going to add the report name that I created earlier. And I'm going to set the image as the image value here. So, and here we go. We have three nice that should actually be four nice images. So they're a bit big and we need to change that. So let's have them as four columns. There we go. You see what we do with the data here? It, it looks, it looks a lot nicer in this way. And let's, Resize it a bit and let's have that percentage here. Well, let's, let's have that percentage here again. Uh, I think Power BI has had enough of me today. There you go. All right, so let's move this one right here. So what I can do now, I can just select the others and these are the other projects and I can select the R and D projects and I can select the construction projects. And that looks very nice. Now, the only thing that we haven't mentioned is the values and the values is actually pretty nice. It allows for cross filtering or cross, um, cross-referencing the data and what we need to do for that is we need to add a single value of the uh, measure kind and if we do that and I select one of these values I see that this is grayed out there's no construction for this resource and development and we can also see the long task situation is also another kind of project so this is a nice way to visualize data that's not there um, and it's also not selectable. There's obviously more ways of filtering out data that's not there. Um, so let's have a brief look at uh, formatting. The usual suspects are here. So what I mean with that is that we actually have the option to um, change the column uh, orientation, the column uh, the amount of columns as well. So we can have this chiclet slicer actually looking horizontally. And like this, that would also make a lot of sense. Um, I typically like to have it as a vertical with the four options that I had previously. You have the multi-select that we mentioned before, and we also have a forced selection that will automatically trigger the first value that you have in your selection. And this doesn't give you the option to deselect any, uh, to deselect 
a value when it is the last value in the slicer. So I typically find that um, a bit overkill, but there could be a situation that uh, situations that you would actually use that. Then we have a header section that you can turn on or off. Uh, I typically don't need it because it's self-explanatory of what we're looking at. Um, then the chicklets can each have a change in how it is uh, formatted, uh, such as uh, the text size, the height, the width, um, maybe even a background color for each chicklet uh, for the whole visual. Uh, there could be also be transparency in here. That hand looks new. You see that? That hand is different. Um, then the selection color obviously starts at blue. You might want to have that correspond with the rest of your um, theme. And that means that you would like to use these theme colored uh, visuals. There's also a hover color. It currently doesn't have a hover color but we can set that for being purple maybe. Oh, purple. Oh, it only changes the, the name. Do you see that? All right, so I'm going to remove that just being automatically. Um, there is an unselected color, which currently is white. You can also have that light gray. Um, you can also have that white. You can have the disabled color being a little blue, uh, that means that when there is a section for the construction, you see that light blue turning up for the values that don't actually show up, that aren't actually selectable. And this tip came from uh, the Pragmatic Work guys, who are also have a YouTube channel and are doing an excellent job here. So thanks for that, um, that little tip there. Then there's a bit of conditional formatting that you can do, field formatting as well. And um, what I also like to do is add a shadow to call out. Oh, I'm selecting the wrong one. I was <laughs> kind of wondering what conditional formatting was going to do. Um, so the images, you have an image split uh, section where it says, okay, well, 50-50 is going to be the image. Uh, you can also set that to being bigger where the uh, image size will take up more of the real estate within that slicer. Um, or you can turn it back. You can have it rounded for your round images. Uh, you can stretch the image or you can uh, have the image at the bottom. Um, as you can see, there's, there's a lot that you can do uh, with this slicer. Uh, and as I mentioned, uh, you also have this shadow, uh, which also brings out uh, that nice blue. No, <laughs> it brings out the, the slicer just a bit more. Um, let me just remove the background color because it's because it's not quite helping with visualizing what I want to show. So obviously this isn't the only cool visual out there for Power BI. Um, I'm exploring visuals where I see project management fit. Um, so have a look at the playlist that's on screen now. And if you think this was a helpful video, um, click on that like button and consider subscribing to the channel. Currently, I'm closing in on a thousand subs and I would love to have you on the list as well. So with that, thank you for watching and I hope to see you next time.